The Otago was built in um, 1869 in Glasgow, in Britain. It was a three-masted iron bark, so a sailing ship. No steam power or anything like that. Um, and broadly, it, it was engaged in, in voyages out to Australia at an early uh, date. Um, and the period we're looking at, when Joseph Conrad was involved, it was about 1888, uh, 89, it was around Australia. It eventually ended up in Hobart itself uh, in 1903 when it was made redundant, came out here and then it was uh, gradually used as a coal hulk for quite a few years. So it was sold um, for one pound to a local, a local man, Henry Dodge, who actually took it up to the place where it is now at Otago Bay. So it's been there, for, well, since, the, since that date. The Otago lasted until about 18, 1937 was the first attempt to dismantle it. In 1963, the, um, actually, they did get in there and actually cut the hole down to, basically to where it is now, to the waterline. Um, but for the foreseeable future there, certainly what's, what's left there will stay there. And as I said, there are remains of some other vessels over there. The Australian, I think, is the other one that's next to it. And there's other bits and pieces. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be there for a long time. Joseph Conrad was born in what is now Poland, what I think was then Ukrainian territory, and but it was part of the Russian, Greater Russia at that point in time. And I think it was 1857 that he was actually born. So he was a, he was crewing on on this vessel, and the ca and the captain literally got cabin fever, so he locked himself in the in his cabin. So I'm not sure what kind of episode he was having, but he ended up being um, moved to the side, and Conrad stepped up. And took command then. The shadow line was actually based on his service in the in the vessel, so it became very important for people to actually try and retain bits and pieces to, because of its association. So um, apparently, some bits, a bit of the, the hull went off to the United States. I think the wheel of it is somewhere in Britain, and bits and pieces ended up obviously in Tasmania, particular in the particular play piece that is in the Maritime Museum is the um, stairway, what they call the, the stairway cover for the actual one of the officer's hatch at the back of the, the stern of the vessel. Um, and that was salvaged from the vessel and it remained in pretty bad condition. Then it was finally restored for the State Library of Tasmania and then it ended up eventually down at the Maritime Museum. It was only when he was in his 20s that he started speaking English fluently. And he actually, one of the curious things about Comrade is that he wrote in English, you know, so his third language and his novels were published in, in English and then they were translated back into Polish by his niece later on. The most famous novel of his is The Heart of Darkness and I think that really gained its fame for our generation when it was turned into a film by Coppola, Francis Coppola in the, in the 1970s. Typhoon is actually my favourite, so it's a longer short story and I think it's I think Typhoon's probably the best story of a storm at sea. It's just, um, he really captures that. One of the interesting things about him, even though we know him as a writer of the sea, he really didn't like being pigeonholed as a writer of the sea. Apparently he, you know, he thought that that was, it diminished his literary output just to be called a writer of the sea. This vessel for me is a significant part of maritime history and it's a, a significant part of literary history. And I think, you know, as much as we can fetishise fetishise a book or fetishise the literary output by wanting to touch things that those writers had touched. But the very fact that Joseph Conrad um, was such a significant writer of the 20th century, such a significant moder modernist writer, and the fact that he was writing in his third language with such incredible, beautiful and articulate language um, really makes this vessel a perfect a perfect thing to have on, on Tasmanian shores.